All right, folks, hope everybody's doing good today. Um, just making this video uh, for you speed density guys. Um, this is for if you are uh, either first time ECM link users or trying to get your car up and running for the first time ever, or maybe you've had ECM link for a while, but you've been a mass airflow sensor or possibly even mass clamp and uh, you're swapping over to speed density. Uh, either way, this is just the minimum that you would need to get your car fired up and running. We're not talking about uh, getting things dialed in, just get it up and running. You can dial things in later on down the road. Okay, uh, we're on the log screen here. Don't necessarily have to have all of these set up, but the more that you have, you know, basically like what I have here at a minimum, uh, the better. Uh, not necessarily saying that you have to have all these just to get your car running, uh, but the more you have to be able to look at, the better. You know, if you can't see a certain parameter, then you know how are you going to know if something's where it needs to be? So um, anyway. That aside, um, let's let's get to it as far as what you're going to need. We're just going to say we're just booting it up for the first time. Uh, we're on your home page here, uh, you can, and we're only worried about the settings just to be able to get things so you can fire it up. Um, you can either go to ECU config from here and direct access, or let's say we're pulling up a log, uh, maybe a live log, and you're trying to get everything going. You can click down here at the bottom for one or the other. Uh, that's going to bring us to our ECU config, which are all the tabs here. First and foremost, I'll just go through all the tabs you may or may not need. Then I'll go back through and discuss uh, each one uh, that you may need to, to use and why um, or may not need to use. Uh, RPM tab, you'll, you may need that one uh, potentially. Uh, fuel tab, you'll definitely need it. Timing, you won't. Uh, MAF comp, you will need that one. Uh, ignore MAF clamp. Speed density, eh, you may need it, um, at least to get it up and running. Ox maps, uh, idle air, you can both you can ignore both of those. Narrowband O2 sensor uh, simulation, may need it. Um, ALS, FPS, EGR, boost, and dash, you can ignore all of those. Uh, miscellaneous tab, might potentially need it. DTCs, may not need it. Um, and ECU inputs, uh, you're definitely gonna need that one. Um, over here in direct access, you're not really gonna need any of these except for possibly uh, your injector battery adjusts and possibly your SD temp uh, waiting as far as that's concerned. Um, and just for dialing things in or getting things going, possibly uh, load scale, all these other ones, just to get it fired up and running, you shouldn't really need all the other ones. You'd probably be all right leaving them in stock configuration. Um, but going back to it in a little bit more in depth, RPM, they really only would really need this one as far as being able to just get it fired up and running. Um, only would really need the target idle tab here if you've got big injectors, and this, or not big injectors, I'm sorry, big cams and it doesn't want to run. Um, you got big cams it doesn't want to run because your vacuum's so low, uh, you might need to bump that idle up a little bit. Uh, keep in mind, you, you know, don't know if you need to do a best adjustment, you might need to do that. Uh, along with that, we got other videos uh, relating to that, but uh, that's really the only thing you're going to need from here as far as firing it up. Um, fuel, you're going to need that because you're going to have to put in your injector size. So start with, just go ahead and throw in whatever size injectors you have. Uh, believe the base fuel pressure, you know, when you first get ACM link, is going to be the stock value for whatever uh, generation car that you have. If you need to change that, if you're uh, if you got some uh, fuel per Fuel modifications and you've changed things then just just simply make it match um, and of course whatever uh, stoichiometric ratio uh, that you have depending on the fuel you can change that it's not a detrimental it, it should be able to run uh, regardless uh, w whether you change that or not but always more beneficial to try and get as close as possible uh, and then your dead time um, I'll I'll try and remember to put in the link uh, or the description as far as the uh, injector sizes as far as dead time keeping in mind that that's just a uh, you know a suggestion get it as close as possible as you can um, not every car is gonna run the same you may have different airflow may have different fuel or fueling requirements this is ju just a suggestion okay so a lot of people will uh, take that page as a grain of, as a grain of salt and they're using it like the Bible whatever it says that's what they're putting it in there just start so um, you may have to go higher or lower uh, adding dead time uh, adding more fuel lowering dead time subtracting fuel so uh, 
we need fuel, air, and spark, timing, all everything to work there as far as it to build a fire and run. You can have fuel, but you may not have enough. So you may have to add more dead time to get it running, uh, just depending on your uh, set of injectors that you have. So, uh, but the global global injector size and dead time, um, those can be important as far as getting it running. Timing, that's not an issue here. We can ignore this one. Uh, math comp, we're going to need this one because we're going to have to uh, swap from a stock or GM math, whatever it is that you have, and swap over to speed density. Okay. Um, you'll probably want to have this box checked. Um, if you have it unchecked, if you've got any adjustments made here, um, that's going to add or subtract from your speed density table over here. Okay. Um, there are certain certain situations where you might want to leave it unchecked. I've got another video uh, discussing that, so I'm not going to go in depth here, but for the purpose of just getting it fired up and running, just have it checked. You can, you know, dig into that later on down the road. But uh, aside from that, you can ignore all of these um, as far as speed density is concerned. I'm going to reset this. This is just from an old log anyway. Uh, but aside from that, you can ignore everything else here. We're just worried about putting it to speed density so that it knows it's running speed density. Uh, math clamp. I see a lot of people running speed density and they're enabling math clamp and all that. Ignore this one. Don't even need it. Uh, you're running full speed density now, so not needed, <clears throat> not needed at all. Uh, speed density, um, this one you may not necessarily have to get up and running, but you know sometimes you might. You want to get your engine displacement because you want to get everything as close as you possibly can. It always helps to get everything you know as close as possible, get it up and running. So you want to put your displacement in there, and sometimes your your uh, these parameters are right around here that I've got highlighted. This is your airflow based on this section right here. And if, you know, if your airflow is real low, you may have to raise these. Okay, if you're having to raise these really sky high, you may have a boost leak or something. Those are common sense things you should be doing anyway. But I see everyone always ignoring them. Oh, I've got new parts. It doesn't leak. Blah blah blah. Whatever. Check it. You know. So uh, I've had brand new parts. I've put the stuff on. I've got leaks. So it's always good to check. You're gonna be throwing everything off. And you're having to raise these real high and unrealistic numbers. Um, and it's just not gonna run right uh, as it should. So uh, people want to argue with me about those things all the time. Go do boost leak check and. You know, oh yeah, you're right. I had a problem. So duh. So anyway, um, aside from that, any of the other part of the table here, you shouldn't need it as far as uh, just getting it running. Uh, moving on, ox maps. Don't worry about that. Those are you know your nitrous or whatever else secondary maps. Uh, you you know deal with it at the time. Ignore it otherwise. Idle air shouldn't even uh, be needed. This is mainly for the mass airflow sensor guys who. Uh, have a stock type MAF or have the blow off valve uh, after a mass airflow sensor and they created this for those guys so it's not going to apply to you if your speed density uh, narrow band O2 sensor simulation we're only going to need this if you have a wide band that's having to simulate a stock O2 sensor if you're using your stock O2 sensor ignore this you don't even need it just ignore it all together I'm uh, not going to need uh, the ALS, I think one of these four, not going to need the ALS or NOC, FPS, EGR, boost, ignore those. I'm uh, not going to need your dash. Um, miscellaneous, uh, you'd only need this one if you're having to um, use a cam angle sensor uh, that's anything other than a 95 or 96. Okay, if you're using anything that doesn't have a 95 or 96, you're going to want to uh, check this box. And I'll also try and remember to put in the description um, as far as the firing order that you need to have. Okay, so you have to swap your firing order. So if you're doing everything else, you've got everything else right, you even check this box, but you didn't uh, swap your firing order around, well, you know, there you go, there's your problem. Yeah, uh, you'll need to go swap your firing order around. More than likely, that's going to be your issue. Everything else in here really shouldn't need it unless you're having to test some sort of solid noise, but even still, they shouldn't be related to anything as far as just firing it up for the first time or getting anything running. Okay. Um, the DTCs, you won't need this tab unless you, you know, you may want to check it if you keep, if you're having a problem getting it running, uh, might be good just to check, make sure you're not having a fault code pop up something that could be addressing the issue. I see a lot of times people are trying to get their car up and running. They'll have, have all of this, uh, filled up with fault codes. Um, you know, because they didn't have something right or they had a mechanical issue or something. So, um, good to check here, but it's nothing that's going to be getting you up and running as far as that's concerned. Uh, ECU inputs. This one you will need for speed density. 
uh, regardless, uh, MassAir Mass Air Flow Sensor guys, they don't need it unless it's a uh, wideband uh, simulating a, a narrow band. They would only use this one here. If you are simulating a, a narrow band, you would use a section here just to tell the ECU where your sensor is at or the input that's to the ECU so it knows where to look for that. Okay, and then you are going to be telling the ECU where to locate the, the map sensor. Okay. Uh, sometimes I will see people that will have it as Barrow and they may have it in their MDP or they'll have it in their M MDP and it's actually in their Barrow. So if you have it as one and it's, you're doing everything else correctly and it doesn't run, you may want to swap it over and see if that helps, especially if you've got the SD cable. Uh, sometimes people have it input at the wrong one. This is telling where the ECU, this whole section right here, pin assignments for ECM link functions. ECU side. This is where the, the ECU is going to be looking for that sensor so that it you know can run. Everything up here, the PC side, this is just what you're using to log. Okay, so uh, you don't necessarily have to have those values up here uh, for it to run. So as long as you've got it down here, it should run. Um, but if you don't have it up here, how are you going to know what the values are? Are you going to know, you know what your wideband readings are? Are you going to know what your map sensor is putting out? Things of that nature, okay? Um, you don't have to worry about the ECU input locks for factory code. All this does is just, you know, if you've got a uh, mass airflow sensor and you take it out, because it's usually looking for an intake temperature and a barometric pressure with your mass airflow sensor. This is not, the intake temp sensor is not the same as a uh, intake or IAT sensor. This is not the same. Uh, every mass airflow sensor or, or the ones that we'd use for our cars uh, has a, a section in the mass airflow sensor that reads the intake temps. Um, that's not the same as the IAT though. And if you're not using a stock mass airflow sensor, you can just lock it. Or, you know, if you're not using a rear O2 sensor or you're not using one of these, it's just ignoring that. It's not looking for that uh, particular sensor or that value. So, it, you know, it frees up the ECU to be able to do other things. So, um, but that has nothing to do. If you don't want to mess with this, just leave it alone. Okay. But we're just talking about just being able to get it up and running, uh, fired up and, and going. Okay. So the direct access things that you're really going to need to re really be dealing with here. Let's see. You might need your injector battery adjust. It's basically the same as your dead time that we have in our fuel tab. Uh, the fuel tab, uh, the global dead time there is you know, no matter what the voltage is, it's going to stay that same, the same value as far as dead time. Here, we're looking at injector-based, uh, or I'm sorry, not injector, uh, voltage-based dead time, depending on what your uh, voltage output is. So if you have an alternator that's dying and you're on a lower voltage, you want to add more dead time uh, to deliver more fuel. I see people all the time trying to get their cars dialed in just for idle. They can't even do it. They can't get it running because their alternator's dying and you don't have as much fuel. So that's where you might want to bump these sliders up or down or whatever the case. And if you've got big injectors, you may have to pull these down a little bit because you're having to pull that extra fuel out. Okay. Um, if you've got a data sheet, uh, you may want to put those numbers in. That'll definitely help. I generally just use the global uh, dead time uh, normally over here. Um, it's not going to hurt if you go in the negatives if you have to. Uh, but it's, like I said earlier, it's helpful to get everything as close as possible. So. Uh, just use your data sheet if you have one. If you don't, you're just trying to get those numbers from someone else or just call a factory where you got them from and figure out what they should be. Um, and if you just can't absolutely get them, then just use the global dead time. But just get these as close as possible. Uh, it's going to be a suggestion anyway as far as that's concerned. It may, may not be exact uh, from one card to the next. Um, but you don't necessarily have to 100% absolutely get it done. But again, we're trying to get it fired up. So why not get as close as you can? Okay. Um, aside from that, your load scale, just tell, you know, uh, the ECU what size engine you're running. Um, may not necessarily get it up and, um, and running based on this one. You could probably leave it alone. Um, but aside from that, the only other one here, and it'd probably fire up without it. This is if you don't have an IET sensor, let's say you've just got a map sensor and that's all you could afford. Uh, and that's all you have. And, um, you're just trying to get up and run. Uh, you want to ignore any kind of intake, uh, temps as far as that's concerned. And, and what you have to do, you have to change all these numbers here to zero. That basically ignores it. The, I, the intake temp sensor. Okay. 
And then if you get one, well, just, you know, put it back to stock settings, or you may have to adjust these uh, for whatever the reason uh, down the road. But again, we're just trying to get up and running. But other than that, that's really the only things you should really need. Um, most of them are going to be in the ECU config section and uh, direct access. You may or may not even have to touch any of them over here. The only one that you would use more than any other would maybe be the injector battery or battery adjust if you have to adjust your voltage based dead time because that is going to be affecting your fuel output. Aside from that, uh, the other ones are really not as important, may not even need them at all. You know, a lot of times I see people changing a whole bunch of uh, values in all these tabs and they have no idea what they're doing or why they're doing it. If you don't know why it needs to be changed, leave it alone. Okay, it might be uh, a reason why you're not able to get it running to begin with. But uh, all that being said, uh, check things, all your, your basic mechanical things. Make sure your base timing is good. If you have uh, an adjustable uh, cam angle sensor, um, boost leaks. I preach boost leaks. Every tuner does. Boost leaks, boost leaks, boost leaks. Um, doesn't matter if this is brand new or not. Um, brand new parts, check for boost leaks. Okay, because yes, that will, even though you're on speed density, I have a lot of guys that say, oh, I'm on speed density. I don't have to worry about boost leaks. Yes, you do. Okay, it can affect how your car runs if it runs at all. So uh, check those things. But fuel, uh, fuel, air and spark, um, those are the things you need. Make sure you have enough fuel. Uh, make sure everything is timed correctly and all your sensors are, are good. Uh, if I, everything is good there, those are the few small minute things that you would need mainly in here in EC, ECU uh, config uh, just to at least fire it up and then go from there. Okay, hope that helps. I'll post them up as I get to them. Y'all have a good one.